Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today what I want to do is introduce to you the future of power electronics. It's in this box. <laughs> so imagine if this was the early 1960s and I said I had a MOSFET in this box. Well, it was the future of power electronics back then. It played a huge role in almost replacing the bipolar transistor in power electronics. And this is the GANFET. This is actually an eval card with a driver that Renaissance provides uh, to drive a GANFET. So there's a GANFET and a driver in here. And we're going to power it up, turn it on and off, and we're going to show it to you, okay? I just want to talk about why this thing is the future of power electronics. Now, the, the part was actually made by Intercell, who became part of Renaissance. So it's got an Intercell part number. Let's get to that in a moment. I just want to show you something, okay? What I want to do is show you my whiteboard. <laughs> kind of zoomed in. I hope you can see this a little better. Uh, I've got a bipolar transistor here. Collector, base, emitter. I've got a resistor in the collector. Tied to some voltage and a base resistor tied to some signal coming in and an emitter resistor just tied to ground all right and what i'm trying to show here is that when you drive a signal into this transistor and you want to pull say the collector down to ground well close to ground you have some voltage drop on this resistor and you may not even have that resistor there anyway you know it'll turn on essentially pull it to ground and when it turns off, it essentially pulls up to V because there's no current flows, no voltage drop here. So this goes from, you know, basically ground to voltage. And it's an in inverted output from the input because when it goes high, it pulls this low. Okay, I guess if I would have taken the output here, it would have been uh, non inverted, but taken off up here. Uh, that's the way the eval card set up, so I just want to kind of show you what we're going to be looking at. So, bipolar transistor wasn't great at a switching power supply because you have to put a bunch of current in. It's a current-driven device. Sure, it takes some voltage at the base. You have to, you know, you have to bias this base emitter uh, junction by about say 0.7 volts, would we'll just say. But you have to, you know, you have to do that, and then you have to push some current through. And how much current you have to push through depends on how much current you're going through here. In this example, I'm showing 20 amps. We're going to pull 20 amps through. And the bipolar transistor had a gain. And so current driven, it, the gain would tell you how much current you had to put in here based on what you wanted here. So let's say in this example, we have 20 amps. And we have a gain beta of 20. So current divided by the gain is how much current you got to put in so one amp and then on the emitter you'll get this 20 amps joining this one amp you get 21 amps coming through here so not real fast because you'd have to push current in there uh you know bias this junction you know push some electrons around and and then when you want to turn it off you have to kind of do that in reverse and so anyway it just wasn't very fast switching frequency and power supplies were not real fast so you know you could actually maybe even hear them they'd be in audible range so you know in some specs today there's an old kind of thing that still sticks to some specs is the frequency has to be above 20k well they've been above 20k for a long time uh since the mosfet was introduced in the 60s they you know the mosfet was expensive as it became less expensive it replaced the bipolar transistor in the switching power supplies frequencies went up higher power supplies shrunk and all that stuff became more efficient right because now you're not dumping one amp to get 20 okay so that's the bipolar transistor so let's look at the MOSFET one more thing on the bipolar transistor I put this resistor in here to kind of talk about the thermal runaway aspect. When you put current into a bipolar, it has this gain. As this transistor got hot, 
the gain would go up actually so it would pull more current and you know if you had some feedback in that maybe you're okay what this resistor did is gave you feedback as current came through and dropped a voltage here it was seen by the input signal right if this was say a 2 volt signal coming in here you get a 0.7 volt drop here well if you're uh, dropping voltage here then you get 0.7 plus this voltage subtracted from this and that's how much you could drop across your input you know bias circuitry so by putting this resistor here the more and more current went through there the higher this voltage was which was you know subtracting away from the drive voltage so what does that mean when you put transistors in parallel then that really helped because now you could force them to kind of share current okay audio amplifiers same thing the bipolar transistor uh, hugely replaced by the MOSFET in, in the output of power amplifier for the same reason much easier to parallel okay plus easier to drive you didn't have to put so much current in okay let's look at the MOSFET alright guys so here's my FET uh, not a great drawer of course you can tell that but okay here's my MOSFET and it's an enhancement mode you can tell by the three plates here they're not connected you have to apply a voltage and then it completes this junction and enhances the FET turns it on so pulls this down to zero now what happens though is you don't have to pump a bunch of current through here all the time while it's on you do for a moment though because there's this capacitor so you have to charge that cap so you do have to have some drive capability to charge and discharge these capacitors okay and you know this is an obvious one because it's between gate and source you're charging it and this drains pulling down but as it as it is this gate voltage you're putting a voltage here and this voltage is dropping so the potential voltage across here is changing so you're charging and discharging both these caps as you're turning on and turning off that MOSFET so there are some losses when you're switching that thing but you can see the isolation barrier the gate you know is not connected to those so you don't get that current like you do on the bipolar so that's nice you just get kind of an initial inrush current into these gates into these capacitors as you charge and discharge the other thing is when this turns on unlike the bipolar transistor that kind of has a fixed voltage from you know from collector to emitter around say 0.2 volts on a MOSFET you're going to have a RDS on there's really some series resistance in here and as the current goes through there you get a voltage drop across that series resistance well they've made huge advancements in MOSFETs you know every few years they make another kind of big step but the thing is is the GAN FET is leapfrog that it's a huge advancement it takes less material silicon and so on to to make the part so it's shrunken down so for the same you know performance they have a thing called a uh, figure of merit FOM figure of merit and what that is is this these capacitors uh, they come out to a QG kind of a, a, a gate charge and they take that uh, number and that number it kind of tells you how much energy you really need to charge the gate so you take that charge number and you multiply it by the RDS on and I think that's how they get the figure of merit so that's how they can compare a FET to a FET and the high voltage GAN FETs say the 600 volt FETs I believe I think even 200 volt FET I think the figure of merit is on order of like a hundred times better I mean that crazy and and say a hundred volt FET like what we have in this box back here uh, it's probably 60 percent 70 percent better 80 percent somewhere around there so it's still a huge improvement it's about a three to four X improvement even still all right so for the GAN FET they use essentially the same symbol at least some people do EPC whose FET we have on our eval card uh, 
it's a EPC efficient power conversion it's their mos or it's their GAN FET and so essentially this gate chart these capacitors just get much smaller so the GAN FET really excels at switching fast because you don't have to charge and discharge these things that turns on the FET much faster turns it off much faster so there you go and they they also have very low RDS on so it's just a big time improvement on a MOSFET you get an improved MOSFET in a smaller package now you, you may notice I don't have that resistor here because uh, the bipolar transistor had that negative temperature coefficient where you could have a thermal runaway if you had a bunch of transistors paralleled one could hog the current unless you put those resistors in there to, to force them to balance so you lost a little power across the resistors as well well MOSFETs have a positive temperature coefficient so they just share better so that's another reason they're used in uh, audio amplifiers and switching power supplies it works out great too because we often parallel MOSFETs and another I almost want to call it a hybrid audio <laughs> amplifier but the uh, class D amplifier where it switches on and off it looks a lot like a switching power supply you're turning things on and off and so in a lot of ways it acts like a switching power supply so uh, that GAN FET is going to make a huge impact on class D amplifiers it's going to make them uh, perform much better because it can turn them on and off much faster so you won't have it'll be easier to take those those pulses and meld them together you know so anyway yeah that's another big big improvement you'll see is in class D amplifiers inverters any kind of switching device big improvements future power electronics let's come over here and see what it looks like on the on the uh, bench but before we do that let me just pull it out of the box <laughs> hey since we're zoomed in maybe you can see it better so uh, it came in this little plastic bag I got it out of here so I'm gonna bring it close up show you a close up to this guy okay uh, alright guys so this is my circuit this is basically the circuit on the eval card just we're gonna look at the eval we're gonna look at the data and all that kind of stuff. I just want to show you my picture. I, hopefully it's easy to see. This gate drive chip drives this GAN FET and it has a resistor in the drain. So the signal that we're going to be watching is this signal here. So when it turns on, we'll see it go low. When it turns off, we'll see it get pulled high. When it goes low, we'll pull current to this resistor. So we'll pull some current through there. And I think we'll put 12 volts up here because this chip can be powered by 12 volts. So I've got the eval card allows you to tie these things separately but I'll just tie them together alright and so we'll drive it 12 volts and this chip I think it's good for norm typically 4 to 13 and a half volts the drive voltage out is typically I think 4.5 volts so that brings up the one weakness on the GAN fit the gate drive they don't like voltages above 6 volts so that's why this gate chip is such a big deal okay and that's one of the things with the development of the GAN FET. The drive was not trivial and the FETs were more expensive. They didn't have as many of them out there. So as they developed all those things, you know, today they're becoming way more affordable. We're starting to use them. And, you know, it's the wave is happening, guys. Okay, so what this chip does for you, though, is it takes the, the, the drive signal from your PWM chip and it'll put it out here at the four volt four and a half volt level so let's say if it's 12 volts coming in it converts it to the four and a half volt level making it safe for the GAN FET just place these guys physically close you follow the placement guidelines that I'm going to show you and things work great okay so the signal comes in comes out and it's inverted at this point the way the way our circuits done and there's also some capacitors on the board I'll show you those and that's just you know in case your power supply you don't want to make it sag when you're turning this on and off so that's just kind of stiffen up this voltage rail and then there's another I think small cap tied to the this pin here okay so why all the colors well I'm showing that what comes in is inverted at the output so what I'm showing is just that 
whatever comes in here, um, this blue one comes turns into this green one. And like any chip, as the signal comes in and it travels to the chip, there's some propagation delay. So I'm just showing the timing between what was actually here and what comes out. So a little bit of delay between these edges. This gate drive is very fast though. So that propagation delay is only like on an order of 40, you know, 45 nanoseconds. So it's pretty darn fast. But because these things switch so fast and people are going to start driving them faster, you know, that becomes relevant. So you want to be aware of that. Now, as far as the speed, there's two things. One is the, the time it takes from here to here, because when you want to control it on and off, you know, you got to know about this delay. The other thing is the transition from high to low, rise times and fall times. These gate drive chips are also very fast transitions. Uh, depending on, and you know, of course, it depends on the GAN fate, but they're what you know, how much capacity you have, and so on. But they're capable of driving in, in just like less than 10 nanoseconds, something like that. So they're very, very fast transition, just a few nanoseconds. So, with my 200 meg scope, that's one thing that might challenge it just a little bit. But anyway, we'll, we'll check that out. So, we're going to look at the signal here, here, and here so that we can see that propagation delay and also we're, we'll look at those edges to see how fast they are okay uh, so all right that's it that's basically it let's come over to the bench uh, before we come over to the bench and look at this little board let me just ask you to subscribe if you haven't done so uh, to like the video hopefully you like it and uh, and I've got links to the Patreon account and Amazon links and stuff like that. So, all right, guys, let's come over to the bench. Okay, and this is the data sheet for this uh, drive chip. And it's also rad tolerant, meaning radiation tolerant. You can use this in some space applications, like low orbit space applications, this plastic package. Here's the temperature, and here's some of the space specs. I'll just scroll through this. Essentially, that's the circuit on the eval card. One thing I want to point out, which I, I didn't really point out before, is I think I had it drawn on my thing, I just didn't talk about it, but it has two outputs, a high and a low. So it's actively pulling it high and actively pulling it low, so it can turn on and off very fast. Temperature ratings, that's the package. Here's the pin protection. So it's showing how it's protecting each pin. Okay, and this is what we'll see on the oscilloscope. We're going to watch these rising edges. See the transition? Rise time, fall time, and then the time off and time on. Okay, let's go look at the data sheet, see what kind of times those are. See these times right here? So propagation delay, about 40 to 65 nanoseconds max. Rise and fall time, depending on the capacitance. So it can be as fast as 6 you know five or six nanoseconds pretty darn fast alright guys so here is the user's manual for the ISL 71040 now you add the MEV1Z for the evaluation card okay and you see look at that Rev1 tw February 2019 this seems like a really new part okay some key features functionality talk about different parts of this different parameters power dissipation how to calculate the power has switching losses and conduction losses big equation but really it just breaks down to two simple things here's some PCB uh, guidelines laying out the board and look at that there you go so when you're laying out the board, you have the FET here. This is the GAN FET right here. The source is this gray pad. And this is an interesting uh, part. It has these big pads. Every other one connects to the source. And the other one is connected to the drain. So you have the drain connection come in, the source connection come out. And then you have the drive right here. Out H and out, out low out L so high low so you drive it high and then you drive it low so look how that layout works the VSSP 
you just tie right here to the source and then you can see the bypass cap for the VDD it goes to the capacitor and it's tied to this ground and then the other it comes to another cap that has a bypass to the driver V drive and then you can see the ground come down here right through the source you see that layout so you know looks pretty easy when you see how they've done it right okay now there is the board there's one side all right you got the big old banana terminals where you can put your uh, power in now you also have to power the chip but depending on the voltage you're going to use like what we're go going to do in our test we're going to tie this VDD right to the VN. Now one thing I just want to point out in case you don't know you know sometimes you see VCC or VC and sometimes you see this VDD well usually you see DD when you have drain and C when you have collector so if you have a MOSFET or a GANFET you see VDD for drain so that's what that's all about so the way this board is laid out is you have the switching FET right here so power comes in goes through the resistors these load resistors three of them in parallel I think they're one watt and then they go through the FET and then out the source and back out so there's a, the current loop right there so the drain is right here on the FET and on the other side of the resistors and so we have that connection point right there we're going to monitor that point right there see where it says drain and then here's our ground connection. So if we wanted to put our probe, our spanner tip, we call them spanner tips, those little springy things on the probes, you can put it right down there and get a really good short connection. So you see ground here, ground here, ground here. They're all the same ground. We'll ohm that to make sure it look ground up here. Now one thing I want to point out, look how they got the, all these little vias, all these little micro vias, all these vias that are stitching uh, this ground plane here to the other copper layers on other layers See all these vias pretty cool, right? It also helps for thermal to take the heat to other layers Now one thing I want to point out is these little spots here these three spots Those are called fiduciaries that helps the equipment that uh, places parts you know Court, you know know the coordinates of the board so they know where to place the parts and we also have these test pins right here these little test terminals that we'll use okay here's the back side here's the input cap see all these vias now one thing I want to point out is you see these vias you can tell they're tied to this copper plane right here see these vias they look different right because there's a clearance around them these are the ones from the other side of the board that they don't want to uh, connect to this layer. Now look, there's a transistor right there. Those little pads right there. When you come up here, that's this transistor right here. So you gotta imagine the cards flipped over like this. So you see that? So there's the, the, uh, the FET and you can see those um, copper bars where it's tying the the one terminal there's the two gate pins right there here's some test pins look there's the manufacturing date the 44th week of uh, 2018 and there's a 94 V0 the flame retardant rating uh, UL for the board here's the rev of the board part number again and here's these nice standoffs so we don't crush things when we plug stuff in and there's the two the two guys together so you can kind of see it you just see these two terminals here they're over here right you just flip the card over here's the schematic let me show you the input the VN right here we got the input capacitors and it comes to the FET so right through those three resistors down to the FET then out of the FET to ground and then here's our drive chip see out H for high out L for low so the input voltage to drive the chip and the input voltage that we are going to switch on and off and what we do is we monitor this drain so this is our loop there's the drain 
and we're going to just tie this power VDD to our input voltage because we're going to maintain a, a voltage that will operate both at the same time. Here's a parts list, and here's what here's the cardigan. Here's the layers. This is a silk screen, okay. Just calling out the part reference designators. Power comes in through resistors to the transistor out the source. There's our drain pin that we're going to look at. And here's the VDD for powering this side of the chip. Okay, so here's the bottom silk screen. Flipping the board over, there's the bottom. Yeah, see there it is right there. There's the top side. Okay, let's go down. And here's the bottom silk screen. And this is this is this guy seeing right through as if you're seeing right through the board. So it's instead of flipping over like we saw before, this guy is as if you're viewing right through the board and you see those capacitors on the other side. See that? So this is when you're looking at uh, artwork, you know, for the boards, you're looking right through. So you can see how everything, the reference designators are all kind of backwards. Alright guys, so here's the top layer of copper, and here's the card sitting on top. You can see the FET right here. The FET sits right here. See the resistors? They sit right across here, right across from this pink path to this yellow one. So voltage is connected to this yellow one, which connects all those resistors together. And then it, on the other side of resistors, it's connected to the drain pin, half the FET. See how the crisscrossing of that FET is right there? So yellow comes down into there, and that's the drain, and that's the connection we're going to look at. We're going to watch that uh, get pulled to zero and then let go. Okay, and then you see the green one's in there, and that's the source. That comes back out. But you can also see how the green ground goes right up through this drive chip. See how the V is in the drive chip? Help keep it cool, make a good connection to ground. They come right up to the ground up here on the on this side. So you can see how ground is just everywhere. So our input power, and this is our input power to the chip. We're going to tie these two guys together with a jumper wire. This is our second layer. Looks a lot like the top layer, right? Difference is, is you see right here, there's connection point to these two guys. that comes up to these two little pins right here. And right here, that's not made. Those things are cut away from the plane. Over here, they're cut away and they've got some traces. Here's our third layer. It looks still a little bit different. So every layer kind of connects different things together. There's the bottom layer of the card. So you can see the pads coming through uh, for the transistor through every layer and you see the input caps uh, strapped across plus and minus. See those caps? You can see how they're strapped across there. And you can see the vias that are cleared away from this uh, ground layer, right? See the ones that are cleared away and the ones that are connected is pretty obvious, right? Okay, and then we have some uh, graphs. And now look at this. Here's a graph of what we expect to see. Uh, when you put a signal in, we're going to put a signal into this board. We're going to put a square wave from the generator into the board, and we're going to see what comes out to drive the FET. And so we're, we're going to expect around a 42.8 nanosecond um, propagation delay. From the time we say turn on, 42 nanoseconds later, it turns on. And then when we say turn off, 42 nanoseconds later, 43.8, it says turn off. And then look at the rise times. 9.4 nanoseconds. That's just crazy. So these edges are super sharp. You can see that how fast they are compared to this. This is 42 nanoseconds, so you can see how fast these edges have to be. So we're going to go look at this stuff. Okay, guys? Okay, let's, let's go test this board out. Okay, guys, so this is our board, and this is our stuff we're going to use to connect this thing up. Now, the first thing I want to do is there's a bunch of different grounds on the board. I know I can tell from the copper they're connected, but from this one, it's hard to tell because there's a cutout around this plane. I just want to make sure. It's called GND, the same as 
uh, these others so yeah we can see it from the meter up here 0.1 so yeah I think the grounds are all tied together very very well so that's great so what we're gonna do is take the power supply plug it into these banana I love those jacks those are awesome although they're kind of heavy and they want to pull this little board over now what we're going to do is we're going to just use this guy and tie it to this VDD pin. Okay, that powers our chip, the gate drive. And this is our generator. So let's see, let's hook it to the ground. And then let's tie it to VN right there. And then this is a cha scope channel one we'll tie that there I'll use this ground here for reference and then okay take off the cap they don't have a little thing to clip on so I'm just going to drop it in that hole for the drain and then I guess I'll just clip on to here for these grounds are all the same grounds we know all right I think we got it set so we're going to use the generator to drive the gate of well the IC the gate drive and it'll drive that GANFET okay and so this is our signal generator and right now I got it set for one kilohertz and I put an offset of two volts and it's a four volts it says peak to peak but it'll be a four volt gate drive with uh, yeah so the two volts sets it up so it's not AC it'll be starting at zero and I think that's what we'll start off is one kilohertz. Okay, guys, this is the uh, signal coming from the generator into the into the chip, and the reference on all these outputs will be referenced right here on this uh, level here. So we got one volt per. It'd be one, two, three, four. So we're putting four volts in on the output. Put turn channel two on. Okay, so the output's about four and a half volts. That's what it puts out. And it's also one volt per. Okay. Now, I have this measurement set up that measures, let me show you. So I can set up these measurements to measure from edge to edge. So this one's measuring from the same front edge to the uh, same front edge and so you can't see it but it says about 46.75 nanoseconds so if we zoom in you can see it this is uh, 50 nanoseconds per division on the zoomed in window so you can see it's that's the propagation delay now if you notice this is the rising edge of the generator feeding into the chip and this is what's coming out. It's a little bit steeper coming out, right? The generator is actually pretty fast too. But it, it does, you know, change the input. Now I can change the output of the generator and so on and it'll still put 4.5 out. So here, let me, let me show you the output of the circuit now. Let's turn on channel three. Okay, and there's the FET turning on, the GAN FET. So now, that's the gate of the GAN FET, and this is turning on. Look how fast that is. And this measurement is reading that time. It's about two nanoseconds uh, time difference. Pretty darn fast, right? Okay, now here, let's just look at the triggering menu. That's the rising edge. Let's look at the turnoff times, see how they look. Now. Look at that, it's all around one division basically. And there we go. There's a generator turning off. See how its slope is a little bit slower? The drive chip is faster. And then look at how fast the transistor turns off. Very fast. Now I have some law and ground probes and so on, so that could be accounting for some of these overshoots or undershoots. So, pretty quick stuff. So what do you think, guys? Pretty cool, right? The future of power electronics. We're going to see more of these things and more videos where I'm going to 
replace MOSFETs with this bad boy and we're gonna have some fun. Hey guys, so just remind you, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and uh, look at the links below for Patreon and Amazon. And uh, so by the way, what'd you think? You like it? Pretty cool. Future Power Electronics. We're gonna see more of this in more videos, okay? All right, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.